Hi, and welcome back to the Business Career College video series. In this video, we're going to have a look at how to use the financial calculator. Now, uh, some of you will be very comfortable with this, and I'm going to keep it uh, fairly basic in this video. We are going to be using some resources that are only available on the Business Career College Moodle study site. Uh, however, uh, it would be easy enough to duplicate what I'm going to show you here. There's nothing um, exclusive in terms of being able to use some information that's available here. So I'm logged into our study site over in the right hand window here. And if you just scroll down uh, for the those that are studying the CFP core curriculum with us, you'll see on the right side here what should look familiar. So this is chapter five, time value of money in the financial calculator. So there are a few things here. There is some practice material you can download, which is sort of more robust questions, talks through keystrokes and so forth. Uh, there is a time value of money worksheet, which is a Word document you'll see just over on the left side here. And that's exactly what that document is. So I actually strongly recommend the use of that, uh, not just while you're studying, but right up to and including your exam. Obviously you can't bring a sheet like this into any of the exams with you, but if you get in the habit of using this kind of thing, you'll find when you sit down to write your exam, everything is nice and easy to do. You're not gonna be fighting with your calculator. So we're gonna use this quiz, the Financial Calculator Practice Quiz. It's just a little two question quiz. It's, you can write it as many times as you want. It's not assessed in any way, other than just that it will show you uh, whether you got a question right or wrong. So we're going to write that quiz. And you can uh, see the quiz here. So it's just little, like I said, two question quiz, nothing to it. So the first question is always gonna be, and I'll have more quizzes in the future uh, that ask you to solve for other variables. But I figured if we uh, get started using future value, everybody should be able to get some good practice in with the calculator. Every time you write it, it will look different. I'll show you that in a moment. Um, that is, it'll be different variables every time. So you can just keep writing and writing and writing and writing the quiz as many times as you like. Um, there are something like 625,000 iterations of this quiz. I guess actually 1.3 million iterations of this quiz, give or take. So the first question then, question one, solve for future value using. So I have something that I always teach in class here, and those of you that have done class with me have heard me do this a million times now. And I always teach, we're not gonna touch the calculator yet. You can see the calculators over here on the left, but we are not going to touch it. Instead, we're going to go to our scrap paper here where we have everything laid out for us. And what my students get sick of hearing is, that we will then draw a line, okay? And the line is simply going to be where we situate all of our data and get ourselves all pointed in the same direction here. So I know a few things from the little case study here. I can see the line is gonna be four years long, okay? I can see that we're gonna have a 13.3% interest rate. Okay, and I can see I have to clear, oh, it's years, we know it's years. So we know we're putting in $1,258 a year. We have no present value, there's none established here. So zero present value and our future value here out at the end is what we're actually gonna solve for. So I'm not even gonna touch the calculator yet. I'm just gonna write all that stuff out, I'm going to write all this stuff out on that line and then work my way through. So now I've got my variable sheet ready to go here. I can see my PY is one and CY is one. Everything is annual, so that's real simple. I'll play around with that in a moment. My times PY is gonna be four. My IY is going to be 13.3, present value at zero, I have no present value provided, and my payment here is going to be negative 12.58. It's money going in. If I know that I'm paying money into a payment, it's going out of my pocket, away from me, that's a negative. If it's coming to me, that's a positive, so we're gonna do that as a negative here. 
my future value is what we're going to solve for. And we're not told anything about beginning or end here. So we'll just use the default setting for the calculator, which is on end. There has to be a reason to move the calculator over to begin. And there is no reason given here. So now we can pop over and start using the calculator. So we're going to bring up first off our PY and we're going to just switch PY to one. And we know then that that'll override CY at the same time. Of course, if I had switched my PY to two, for example, my CY would also switch to two. If I wanted them different, I would have to switch CY after switching PY. Now they're different, but of course we can see that we want them both the same. So I'm just going to put them to one here. PY and CY are both at one. And then I will just quit out of that menu. And now I can go to my N, so second function times PY, and then jump that into the N spot. And then 13.3 is my interest rate. And then I've got no present value. And 1,258 goes into my payment slot. And that's it. So now I've got all the information in there. I don't see begin on the screen anywhere. So I know I'm not on begin. And if I wanted to go to begin, I would just go second function, begin, second function, set, and then quit out of there. Of course, I don't want to be on begin. I'm going to bring back that menu, second function, set, and then get out of there. So now everything is all ready to go. I can just compute my future value and I get $6,127.85. So here I just do 61.28, round that off to the nearest decimal, we're good to go. Um, as the instructions say, no commas or your dollar signs in the answers. You can put decimals in there too, but it doesn't do any good. Just put in whole round numbers and that's 61.28. That's easy. And once we've got that in there, we're gonna go on to the next question, question two. So I'm just gonna clear what's on my calculator screen and we're gonna clear that up. And now we're gonna go on to question two. And again, question two, same starting point. I'm not going to touch my calculator. I just draw my line. and lay out my information. So again, I've got an interest rate here, a 9.5% interest rate. This is all going to be annual. And my starting balance then, I know we've got $134,195 here. It's a little bit uh, weird, some of these amounts maybe, because it's uh, totally random numbers, which is how we can populate the quiz so many times. We know we've got 45 years here. What we have that's different than the last scenario is this time we have a payment as well. And we know we're putting in $5,301 per year. And we're going to solve for our future value. So once we're all laid out that way, we can go to our worksheet down below. PY and CY are both going to be one. We're having one payment per year and one compounding period per year. My times PY is going to be 45. Interest rate, it's 9.5. Present value will be negative 134,195. My payment will be negative 5,301. Again, those amounts are both going out of my pocket. They both have to be negative. This is the most frequent source of confusion with this kind of question is people don't know what to do as far as positives and negatives go. This is somebody who's put money away for retirement savings. That money is not in their pocket and they continue to put more money away as retirement savings. That money is not in their pocket. So all of those amounts are going to be negative future value we're going to solve for. And just as with the last question, there's no reason to go to begin mode. So we're just going to leave it on end mode. And now we're ready to solve. So we're going to go and we're going to clear the calculator here. Second function, clear time value of money, just dump everything out of the calculator. 
we'll bring up our PY worksheet. It's still set to one, so no need to change anything there. We can quit out of there. We know 45 will be our N, just using that times PY shortcut. 9.5 goes into the interest rate spot and 134,195 negative goes into the present value slot and then 5301 negative goes into the payment slot and once we're all done that we can just compute sorry I didn't need to hit that zero there it was just a reflex so we can just compute our future value and according to this this person will have just over 11 million dollars so one two two five nine seven eight and there's a little bit of tolerance with the way the questions are done so if you put seven seven in there you'd still be fine it would still give you the right answer and then we're going to go and we're going to see if we did these well and simply tells us that we got this right. It doesn't tell you what the keystrokes are. It's a little bit of a limitation with Moodle, but basically you've got your answer here. Correct answer is, no worries. And then down below, you got your answer and the correct answer is, no worries, it's all good to go. So that's it, uh, relatively straightforward. And hopefully that helps you to get more proficient with the financial calculator.